Alrighty, so this, this training session is all about ins and outs about the new Pardot email builder, how it works, how you can use it for your business, and basically what is the end product that you can produce. So in terms of this training, I will going to focus on two main tabs that we're going to need to achieve the final result, final product that you can actually use. So the first thing first is the email templates. So these are the email templates that we are literally producing that you can further to reuse. And then email content is the same part of list emails labeled in a different way. So basically, this will be a finalizing point where we're going to be creating our email template into part of list email so we can actually send it out to the prospect. So without further ado, I'm going to click inside the email templates and we will be able to automatically create it for web and mobile. First thing first, I will gonna label it and I will gonna call it email uh, template training. So we remember what it was for. Obviously, further you will always use your naming conventions like country, year, month, campaign name, language, like all of the variables that you need to include. And then a very interesting add on is related entity type. If we want to get additional fields as merge fields in this email template, we can click on this drop down and we can select an object. And then based on that, we will be able to see additional fields appear that we can use and reference in the merge field in the email template itself. So for the sake of example, I will gonna take what can I take? I can take opportunity. This is a great option, quite widely used. Then folder. So at the moment we have private and public folder. You can create additional folders in the future if you need, maybe based on a team, based on the country, but I'll go for the public folder just to make sure it's there and available. Then message content. So this will be a moment where you can already populate your subject line. So I will gonna go to my example over here and I'll just gonna copy paste the subject line that I have prepared. Obviously I just prepared the text so it's kind of quickly and smooth. So I have the subject line and then enhance letterhead. So what is this enhanced letterhead? So at the moment when I clicked on it you see there is this kind of small pop-up that came out but nothing really actually comes out because we haven't built this letterhead. But this will be a definitely a thing that we will need to make. So uh, every time somebody creates a new email template, let's say they have it already ready. And what it is, it's that header bit that com comes up on top. So for example, if by default, every time you want to send an email, you want to have a small your brand logo uh, on the side, uh, you're just going to automatically be able to add it in there by selecting this letterhead. I mean, it's it's kind of letterhead. It's uh, quite self-explanatory if we uh, think about it for a little bit longer time. And then uh, basically what it says here, obviously to design the email template, we will need to go inside the email template builder itself. So at this stage, all I need to do is just uh, click save and I will do so. Perfect. The initial step is made. We have initiated pro the process of email template creation. Now the fun part. We will going to go inside email template builder. So for that, I'll just going to click on edit in builder and it will going to open the email template builder UI. Uh, so this is for all Salesforce admins who are working editing or creating page layouts for records. Uh, it's already kind of similar UI. So what Salesforce did is basically they reused their existing functionality that they have built for Salesforce and now put part of email template builder into uh, their logic. So we can see that Salesforce is really, really keen to make part of as Salesforce and built in so they work hand in hand together as smooth as possible. At the moment, we see plain canvas, nothing is in there. To initiate the build process, obviously, we need to think about whether we have this pre-header. What can be this pre-header? So this pre-header is usually the text that people see 
when they see your email in their mailbox. So there is usual, usually a name and then there is pre-header. So what is that first text, first sentence that they see? For my pre-header, I'm just going to copy again the text that I have pre-prepared. But this is usually provided by the marketing team. What is that pre-header? What the people should see there in the first place. And then we have style. So what is the style? So style is the actual emails background and these colors. So at the moment, we can see it's kind of all here gray. But what would be very logical to do is that we use your business brand colors. So e either we can make it actually completely white. If in this scenario, we want to actually produce like a simple text email. So it kind of looks like manually typed. Or if we want to make it like very visual, very custom with all the images, then we can use the color background. And I'll just going to copy again one of the codes that I have here. So we see how it actually all results. So my background color will be purple today. Uh, bam. Uh, super easy, super simple. And if in a scenario, if you want to be even fancier, you can copy and paste here background image URL. So that means that you can also have a completely custom background image. can be, I mean, literally anything that you imagine. Perfect. So when we are happy with all of this, we can go back to the details and we can continue with adding email template blocks. So in terms of these email template blocks, we have five options over here. We have button, HTML, image, rich text, and the row. So for now, we're going to focus on the image because let's imagine we actually want to start our email template with the nice banner. So for that, I'm going to simply drag and drop the image icon over here then you can probably see that it automatically generates this URL. So this will be URL for that image that we will gonna either add or if we're gonna choose to add image from your Salesforce CMS. So if I click on this add image, then we see we have these two options. So if I click on this Salesforce CMS, this is the part out email template workplace that have been created specifically to support this functionality and every business to make sure their employees use business approved imagery could and should upload the content over here already before they give access them to actually use this builder. So to make sure they use correct logos, correct images, if you have some reusable content, for example, even for social media, you will definitely then add here beforehand. In my specific example, I'm going to use files. So what I have done uh, when I was uploading my sample images, they already appeared here, but it can also be, and it also shows owned by me. So I actually uploaded them. So similarly, as I can be a lead owner in Salesforce at the moment, I am file owner in Salesforce for these images. There can be shared with me. So there can be like the same way as we share Probably, I don't know if you have used files much, but uh, files can be set as private the same way, for example, as reports. They can be set as private, but then you can share them with like individuals. So this would be the case. And then recent are the most recent that I used. And then following, if there are any specific uh, images, or in this case, this would be actually interesting. Like usually if employees are drafting email and they are, for example, adding maybe any like contracts, any like white papers manually by decision. So there can be maybe like some documents that we are following in our org. And if they have been, obviously, uh, we are keeping them in one place, central place, and they're updated there all the time, but we are following them to always make sure we add kind of the latest version to the email. So these would be kind of these options, what they are. And then if I click simply on upload image. So here I have, for example, this is folder from my laptop. And basically these were the kind of images that I prepared and I can select at any time and add. So if I go 
ahead and click on owned by me because before i already uploaded these images i'll just going to simply select them while going to be using my images that i have so this is for example like part of online training banner so let's imagine that we're now drafting email for a specific campaign we have a new initiative and we are adding the banner about that new initiative and then banners there we're happy it all looks great uh, again for every block that we're going to be adding we can also add style so image width so at the moment by default it's 100 percent let's experiment if i change it to 50 then you saw it basically it automatically puts it uh, in the middle and makes the image 50 percent smaller then if i open this kind of pop-up uh, I see left, center, right, and I can also add margins. So these are margins are usually added again for the HTML code in the background, but now we can simply manage them and just so you kind of get the feeling what this margin is. So for example, if I add 50 on the top, we can see that basically these 50 pixels will be added on the top of my banner. But usually if it's, uh, I mean, in, in this case, it's completely unrequired, but you can easily at any point control this. And if I just change the size, let it be back 100% because it makes sense that my image is actually full width. Let's, for example, add here rich text. Each email template needs to have potentially a title. So what this email template is about. I mean, my title can be, are you ready for this? And then we all probably see here like a familiar tools that we already had in older part of UI email template builder, or it just simply, I always like to say, it's like, it's like your G drive. It's, I mean, same things also over here. So I can control the format. Uh, I can make it as heading. I can control the font, uh, any font I like. I can position this in the center if I wish. And as simple as this, I can control this whole section. Now, perfect. We have a banner. We have a title. So next can be a simple, again, rich text. And for this, just to kind of visually, obviously, make it nice and buildable, I will going to add, oops, I will going to add a just a simple description text without even kind of overthinking. Perfect. So we have this text over here, then simply at any time, if I change the width, if I want to change something and if I see it actually would look better if I want to go it on the side, I can do it, bumps, it's ready. Now, very exciting bit is, what if we want to add two columns? So how we can actually achieve it and what we can do with it. We can click on image. And obviously we see that, I mean, to add two images, it's kind of challenging. We can't really do anything. So if I make a mistake at any point, probably you're uh, used to that you have these kind of four options over here. Either I can duplicate it. I mean, if, if, if I really like the section and I just simply want to change something, or if I change my mind and I don't want to have this image here anymore, I'm just click, simply clicking on this bin icon over here. So I'm fixing my mistake deleting this again. So here in a rich text, uh, what we can do, if we click on content, write, continue writing the content, if at any point in our rich text, we wanna also reference specific names, specific details about that contact that we have on their record, we can do so by I mean, adding what, whatever is the text we want to add. And then we can add the merge fields. And then I can, for example, say recipient, uh, find their first name and click on name. Here as well, you can see that because we selected related object opportunity, I will be also able to select all the fields that I have on the opportunity object available. So this will be that moment where we benefiting from that additional lookup and additional opportunity to look up into more fields. But I'll just gonna stick to first name and insert and add comma over here. Perfect, I'm happy with this section. Now, if I click on the plus sign and if I click on row, 
And let's imagine I want to now add two columns into my email template because I want to reference two different things and I want them to be nice side by side. This was basically the row component over here and also the row component over here. So that's what I added. Now we can see by default, I have only one. If I want to create two columns, I have this mini plus icon over here. And if I click on this plus icon, it creates for me this additional column over here. I can click six times, but each of this section can be as wide as two measures. One at the moment is seven. All of the rest will be one because in total we can have six blocks and each of the blocks can be two measures wide. I a little bit exaggerated. I don't need six columns. I need only two. So in my instance, to fix this up and even it up, I'm just adding six over here and making sure there is six over there. What is this padding? So padding is if we want to make that content block stand out a little bit and be from the side, this is that padding that we can add. And for the second one, I can do the same. I can add padding 10, bam. So they're kind of more a little bit inside and a little bit apart from the both sides. Then, because now we have added this row, we can continue adding our components inside these two rows. What I have prepared is we're going to add two images because we want to start, let's say, building content. But before we want to display in an image, what is it actually all about? I'm going to click inside this image that I have added here. I'm going to click on my add image button. I'm going to go to files. And now, uh, obviously, to make it more interesting, we're going to be adding GIF icons today just to see full capabilities, what we can actually achieve. So obviously our emails can be more fun. So let's imagine it's a Christmas. We can have like a Christmas tree going on there, etc., etc. And then I'm going to add also the automatically other file that I have. So we work with them in parallel and I'm going to insert it here. Now, because my GIF icons are meant to be a little bit smaller, their pixels are not looking great. We're going to fix this up. How we're going to do it, we're going to use this style. So everything that we need to fix up, it needs basically styling. So I'm going to make it 30 and I'm going to press on here. Perfect. So now it is my size that I wanted to have. And now I'm going to make the same uh, other one equal. Perfect. So now I have these two gives going on. So what's happening next? This is not it. Uh, I want to be able to add their text under these images. So I'm going to take rich text and I'm going to drag and drop and I will going to drag and drop under the second one. Perfect. Because previously I worked with marketing team and they were very kind and they provided me with all the text that I need to enter in there. I'm just going to simply uh, copy paste it without even thinking about it. I'll just replacing this with the text that I have. Again, well, we can pay attention. We can make it as bulletins if we want to. And in the another example, we can also make it as remove the space. We can also make it as numbers. So, I mean, both options are available. Whichever works best, works best. Then if I see there is too much space, I can always add a space to equal them out. Uh, whatever is required. I mean, it's the same way as any text editor works. So now let's say I'm very happy with how this looks like. This is now going great and well. Perfect. I guess that's probably the most requested feature as far as I remember inside the old email builder is what are we doing with the buttons? And then the simplest workaround is just to add the text and make it hyperlink or like the ugly workaround is adding the image and then making the image clickable. But then it's very, if their provider security will display that image to that viewer in the first place, because you probably know if you send email someone for the first time, you first need to enable show all image content for all those images to appear. So that was pity. But now in this builder, we have beautiful buttons. I am adding the button over here. Oops. 
uh, I'm gonna delete this unrequired row and I have my button over here perfect so now it is black button black button completely doesn't go with my company styling and requirements I need to fix it so again I'm going to my styling section and now this will be a place where I can fix it so first thing first I can choose any font that is available to me in Pardot uh, if I need to I can change the font size so let's say I want to actually make it a little bit smaller make it more petite perfect now the how I can change the button color so we have various things that we can change so we can change font color let's say font color I mean by default it's white if you remember by heart if not then marketing team can provide you but these are those XML codes let's say maybe my I want to make black I can make it bold as well and to see what I just have done we also need to change my button color itself so I don't like this black button color I want my button color to be blue so I can take the blue uh, HML code so this is the color and then also I can choose border color so either it's black or it can be blue as well so it's kind of all one seamless styling then if I see hmm actually this blue text doesn't really look nice I can always go back and I can change it to the white one and then it will gonna update it to the white one and then I can experiment with all of these kind of out of the box things then button size again where it is and how far it is located from everything what is around it is controlled by these button size pixels so from the top from the right from the bottom from the left or if i click on specify button width i can click on this and then i can i just can choose and make it adjustable by default based on the browser and device with these percentages so at the moment it's 100 but let's say i want always it to be 80 percent perfect and then position position can be left can be center can be right and then again we can add like these margins if i add center but let's say i want to make a little bit more space from the previous block that i have i can add 50 percent and then you see it kind of jump, jumps down. So there's a, a little nicer space if I need to have it. Uh, I'll just gonna make it 10. So it's just still there. Perfect. I am happy with my button. And then for all of the marketing, the most important bit is we need to make sure our prospects can subscribe or unsubscribe or obviously manage their preferences. So I'm going to click on this plus icon. I will going to scroll down. I'm going to add the rich text. And then I will going to do this footer in a very quick and dirty way. But the logical bit would be that we can pre-create something that already is there. And then you basically reuse that specific footer that you want. And you can easily do that each time. If, for example, if you click on the source code, let's imagine you have already your code that you need to use always for your footer that has all the links, all the social media icons, like whatever are these things that you always need you can add them here uh, by adding the source and then pasting your custom pre-created html in my scenario i'm gonna demonstrate uh, a simple use case like this uh, where let's say we're just doing it in a quick and dirty way i'm gonna paste it over here but i'll also gonna explain where i actually took this information from so first thing first it's obviously it's just a simple text that we see here i want to make sure my footer is in the middle as always i'm gonna make it central and then we have these key texts that we actually need and then this is the scary scary way how actually those email preference center merge fields and unsubscribe merge fields are looking like i got them from clicking over here on the merge fields and then here we have the section other so in this other I have my preference center and subscribe view online so for example view online I can easily add somewhere on the top of the email in the section if I want and then on the bottom I will be probably using these two so if I click on this email preference center and insert it will just basically give me this link 
in my scenario what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna copy this one i will gonna merge them and then i'm gonna go on this link and then i'll just basically paste it in the in the back of it so it basically renders automatically and then the same thing i'll gonna do with the unsubscribe uh, bumps hops and unsubscribe perfect so now i have made sure they're all nice in in one again uh probably for me i'm very a visual person there is something i don't like and i don't like that these links are in a wrong color they, they don't meet my branding guidelines so to change any link uh, again i'm gonna style it uh i oh, sorry but basically here i can make sure i style it and put this specific block in the right place but if i want to style this whole thing itself so this will be kind of a little bit uh tricky uh but it's doable so either we are changing the color of the text here itself so i mean pretty self-explanatory let's say i want to maybe make it like gray perfect i like gray and then i mean i can do it for all or for each of them so i can make gray over here if in a scenario you want to add some additional twist on it i mean we can always refer and go back to this dirty code and i mean add there more code logic etc etc that's why the leather head clean the top bit and the bottom is the one that you'll probably pre-create do it once and then you'll only focus on this middle part if you need it in the future so now the exciting and the end part is once i'm actually happy let's say this is like amazing beautiful template i'm very happy with all my work i can now safely check how it will gonna look on the mobile it automatically renders it then i mean looks phenomenal uh, all my banner all the texts i'm making sure everything is kind of falling in the right place uh, it meets all my business requirements i am flipping it back from my as a marketeer point of view then this email template building part is done now uh, i'm i know that i have talked a lot uh, solo in monologue for all this time so probably it's probably a good time to give you guys kind of a q a uh, session and opportunity before we kind of move to the next part um, I well, I'm still on hold. <laughs> yeah i am uh, you have my full attention on this. It actually looks great. It's 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 great with what we can do with with this email builder. I have a few questions. Um, uh, first of all, this email builder builder it's available just for Salesforce admins or like person who has just access to Pardot can do this. Yeah. So this is a good question. In terms of everything that you see here on the screen, we need to make sure all these objects and the functionality is available for that specific Salesforce profile, because this is basically a Salesforce object. So they need to have a to Pardot app. Uh, they need to be uh, sales or CRM user. It's like a second permission that they need to have. And then the additional bit is obviously we need to make sure that they have a permission to access this uh, part out email builder functionality. So we, we just need to speak with the Salesforce administrator and make sure everybody is granted access to all of these additional objects on that part out app. Not only part out, but also on this additional functionality. Okay, great. My second question is, so if now in Pardot we have this new email builder function, the ones, the templates we had before created in the other instance. So then do we have to replicate them now to this new way of creating them? Uh, unfortunately, you will need to rebuild all these email templates to be available in this new email builder. They're not linked together and it is kind of a pity to supplement the previous question. So before with that user profile, I had by default part of our dashboard prospects, campaigns, automations, email template content part out reports reports part out settings available and then we just need to make sure those all new users who will want to use this they have access to email template and email content for sure and then this cms channels and work uh, workplaces this is more for admins to manage got it 
uh, the, the other question was uh, when we are uh, importing uh, images and uh, and logos and everything, I, you, you show that it's in the CMS workplace or by um, files. So before I have already imported some of the main files we have in, in the folders, when in the, in the top content folders in Pardot. So then that means that I have to import everything that is already approved to the CMS uh, builder workplace, right? Yeah, so you will use the same structure that you have in Pardot for these folders. So you can add folders for logos, banners, different campaigns, different countries, and then add that content in, in the relevant folders. Okay. Do you recommend that this CMS workplace is just for the, the, the logos and images that are normally always used, like the, the header, uh, like logo, or, or the social media icons for the footer and stuff like that and and then the files for this banner that are changing according to specific trending topic we are using for e emails or all of the images that are always there and always usable or uh, you said it correctly banner logo all the social media icons they're kind of never changing evergreen and then banners that are like one time off thing that you add specifically for each campaign then you can potentially add them using similar in a similar manner like i was adding file from my laptop or i was adding it through through the uh, i guess preloaded images on the cms so it's probably just to kind of maybe g give you a glimpse so potentially uh, for every large corporation, uh, there is probably a marketing team and then there is a separate design team. So that design team can be creating all these kind of images for the couple months ahead and then uploading them to your Salesforce CMS. And then you from the marketing team, you would actually then go to that Salesforce CMS whenever you are building that specific email template and then just pick up that image from there based on previously agreed naming convention that that's the one image that you should use. Then I guess finalize it. Uh, so obviously you probably heard that with Pardot new email lightning builder, we cannot yet, for example, create email templates that can be used in engagement programs. That's kind of safe harbor coming in the next releases. But with this email template builder, we're specifically now building those list emails that you can send to the list or you can send individually to the prospect. Whenever you actually have created your email template to make it a list template available for the use, you will need to come here to this email content click on new, you will need to label it in a way that every person knows that this is kind of my reusable email template for this specific purpose. So, I mean, you, you're going to give it a name. So I'll just going to call it Pardot, Pardot training, uh, give it a description as descriptive as you can be. And then obviously all those email templates that you have created at the moment, for example, the reason I don't see here the email template that I just created now, because there are still some things that we need to fix and enable with the user permission. So that means there is something I'm still missing. But in a perfect world, whenever we fix that thing up, the email template that I just created will appear here. I'm going to select it or I mean, I'm going to search for it if there is like really a lot of them. And then I'm going to basically click on uh, huh, and then I'm just going to click on save. And the reason why we need to create that as an additional list email, because whenever we will going to use this specific email template, we will then start collecting and actually see all these metrics that we usually see if I go to Pardot reports and every time you were reviewing your reports for all individual list emails and that you got by going to reports list emails and then selecting any of the emails you saw over here like all of these stats. This is the location and this is the reason why we need to create that as a email content to make sure all of the stats are available here for you. The reason why it's now in this new location is because if we look at the previous screen, 
this information is purely sitting in Pardot and we cannot use it in Salesforce reports and Salesforce dashboards. But with this, what Salesforce did, they made it available now for you to use also this email open rate, email clicks, unique clicks available for you then report from within Salesforce. So then potentially you can combine all newsletters from this year and then put newsletter January, February, March, and then put columns like click through rate, open rate. So then you see how you did uh, from the kind of engagement point of view across all these emails throughout the year. Okay, so instead of creating a new list email uh, from uh, part of email, we go to email content and create it here. Yeah. Okay, got it. And every time if we reuse the same template, uh, we are going to see the numbers increase or every time if we're going to use this the, the template, but for a different audience, then we create a new email content. Yeah, so th that's correct. So similarly with Pardot, you probably remember that we can create one email template, but we can create many list emails from that email template. So in this scenario, I as a marketing manager, I can create an email template that I want to be used for every monthly newsletter email template that is sent out. So I will, I can then create that main template. And then for example, my junior uh, marketing managers can go and create this list emails by cloning that email template that I have. And then as this is the list email that I'll be sending out in March, I will then click on edit and I will gonna update that email template specifically for that month in here. So basically we are building in a nutshell email templates, let's say five email templates for each business initiative for newsletters, for promos and for uh, internal use. And then every time we have a promo or internal use or a newsletter, we just create email content, e.g. in the old version list email by taking pre-existing pre-made email template and just updating that body bit with the right text, right images, and then basically sending it out. And then cool thing, uh, additional thing too, is obviously on each email template now, we don't need to have these silo exchanges somewhere in Slack, like, hey, did you saw how this email template went? Yeah, it was good, bad. Here you have uh, all the chatter functionalities available. So for example, I can directly at mention you and say, hey, uh, this uh, email is doing great. What do you think? And then I can uh, click on the person and notify, for example, person or, I mean, add here like something additional and ask somebody something, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can share it. It's basically oh, like a great. cool way how you can collaborate and then you can comment and add mention people internally. Or for example, this is also will be good. Let's say somebody is creating email template and then two people are giving them feedback. So then you can, uh, I mean, share a link and then they can, uh, my feedback. Uh, and then basically somebody can give you feedback on your work in progress. And then you can obviously like, don't like, <laughs> etc. Great. Can we, uh, it just has to be a Salesforce user or can we put like an alias? For example, I don't know, marketing at .com. And then yeah. all the people that is under that alias will receive that. It needs to be like a specific user that, uh, I okay. mean, but potentially you can reference like a group of people it can be either a user or like at mentioned people or groups. So it's basically, it's the same way as you used to work with, I mean, at mentioning people on opportunities or leads. So, okay. I mean, if they are under that group in Salesforce, then they all can be notified. Okay, perfect. Thanks.